Troll Stew by Christopher Courtley From the Amazon Kindle book, Troll Stew A Strange Brew of Dark Fairy Tales and Poems for Adults by Christopher Courtley From the dark city park comes a sickening crunch It's a troll in his hole having someone for lunch Grinding bones for his bread, he skewers poor Fred Nice and hot from the pot, hear him gleefully munch. Not much meat on these feet, he says, nibbling some toes. On the floor by the door, heaping piles of clothes, where six children await the same horrible fate, as he chomps and he romps, and his appetite grows. Who'll be next, he roars, vexed that the boy was so thin. Here's a plump, tender rump I can sink my teeth in. And with that he leans down and grabs portly Jane Brown, who's a sweet little treat, as delicious as sin. Then he whirls on two girls who are trying to hide in the clothes that he throws in a heap to one side. Now on you I will sup, he growls, snatching them up in his claws as his jaws gape impossibly wide. With surprise Mary cries, won't you kill us at least? Our friend Fred was long dead when you started to feast. By the time I am through, he says, you will be too. Then he grins and begins on their toes, the cruel beast. No remains but the stains on his teeth and the hair all around on the ground of his hideous lair. Mary's locks, Helen's curls, once the pride of those girls who are now just his chow, and it hardly seems fair. Only three left to see. There's a girl and two boys. In the back, tearful Jack makes a whimpering noise. Billy also is loath to be boiled in broth, but that's moot to a brute, and he flings them like toys. In the stew with you two, he exclaims as he plops Jack and Bill in the swill, spilling only two drops, and then smacking his lips, from a ladle he sips of this new tasty brew, loudly licking his chops. Jackie wails, Billy flails in the bubbling soup, they will cook till they look like a bowl full of goop. Yum, Troll says anon, once the boys are all gone. Now to eat this most sweet youngest girl of the group. Last alive, only five, but precocious and wise, little Jill remains still on the floor where she lies, coolly feigning her death, never taking a breath. Though he's near, there's no fear in her unblinking eyes. He says, Come, I'm not dumb. And although I confess you're a pro, as a show it just doesn't impress. I've a keen sense of smell. You live, I can tell. And he takes her and shakes her till her hair is a mess. Dead or not, in the pot, the troll chuckles with glee. All the same, play your game, makes no difference to me. But she knows that it does. It matters because, as she saw, he likes raw, screaming girls with his tea. So she simply lies limp, like old lettuce. And then he gets mad, just a tad, and he shakes her again. Come on, put up a fight, he yells, starting to bite her left leg. Come on, beg! Till she cries out in pain. Then the troll's laughter rolls. That's what I like to hear. And he roars as he pours himself blood-flavored beer. Save the best for the last and don't eat it too fast, he quotes as he gloats over Jill with a sneer. But to this, our young miss says, you don't frighten me. Hell, I've seen worser fiends on late-night TV. Courage fails once you learn what it feels like to burn, he replies, but her eyes roll contemptuously. What a feat! He can eat helpless children. This troll is so brave in his cave, like a mouse in its hole. Now the monster goes wild and drops the wee child, starts to swear, tears his hair, breaks his ladle and bowl. Little troll in your hole, is that all you can do? Scream and yell? What the hell kind of monster are you? Going out of his mind, with rage driven blind, now he lunges and plunges straight into the stew. As he'd leapt, Jill had stepped to one side of the pot. She had planned where to stand, picking just the right spot. So by keeping her head, she cooked him instead, and he learned being burned hurts a hell of a lot.